Up next on Jeep Creep, I'm going to show you how to get rid of all these nasty weeds. Go from this to this to gone using the four gallon backpack sprayer and an herbicide called RM43. Boom. This is a backpack sprayer. Okay. Um, I've had the smaller sprayers that are like the little jars and you just keep pumping them, pumping them, spray, spray, pumping them, pumping them. Really annoying. The nice thing about this is number one, you're carrying four gallons. Number two, it's a lever. Boop, 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 boop. So it's uh, a lot easier to keep going, spraying, going. This product's from Harbor Freight. You can purchase it. I'll have the links in the description, uh, the item number and everything. And uh, the nice thing about this, it has four nozzles that it comes with. We'll play with that. 90 PSI pressure. That's a lot. It's commercial grade. Um, it's a high performance piston pump. I don't know if there's pump aficionados. Ergonomic tank design, shut off valve with on off lock, 28 inch wand. And uh, it's large and easy to fill the opening of it out. So let's get this put together. Yeah, here's the opening. It's 5.5 inch opening. I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but uh, it'd be a little easier to fill it at least. It's got an adjustable shoulder strap and waist belt. So you can keep the, the weight on your waist and off your shoulders, which is what you want to do like when you're backpacking. Um, yeah, it won't hurt your back or you won't get fatigued easily. Let's get it opened up and set up. So that's kind of the nice thing about this so far. I'm only seeing the backpack, the lever, and the wand. Um, the hose appears to be attached already, and it is, so that's cool. That's one less thing. Here's the gun for the wand, so I guess we just screw that in, put that in. This thing slides down. It's got an O-ring on it. That's good. So in the bag, let's take a look at the included uh, parts here. This looks like a fan nozzle probably because it's got a wide thing on it. It's some sort of cap. I'm not sure what that's for yet. Oh, here's a, a Y nozzle. It sprays out two spots. That's cool. This appears to be like a shower head, like a soaker, I'm guessing. And this one I have no idea. I think this is just a single, uh, like a long shot spray, I'm guessing. So here's an explanation of the, uh, the heads here. Cone nozzle, fan nozzle, double cone nozzle, sprinkler nozzle. So I was pretty close to my guesses. So this only kind of goes on one way because there's a hole in it, so that's cool. But I will mention this too, another cool feature I did not notice. You can put the lever on your right or the lever on your left, depending on which side you want to pump from. The trigger lock is a cruise control, so if you want to just keep it constantly running, you can just push, uh, hold down the trigger, push this green thing in, let it go, just like a pump at the gas station a little bit. So now you're just walking around spraying constantly. The pads appear to be either way, but that's not flip them around and then it's got these little hooks right here and on the side of the tank you just clip in your hook like so and uh, you lock in. Before I fill it up start using it let's uh, put it on see how it fits. Strap. Yep, we're gonna let that out. Been a long summer of good eating. All right, waist strap could be an issue for some of my fine pump fellas. I wear a 36 inch waist and this is let out all the way. So that waist strap could be an issue for you guys if you're a bigger fella than myself. The shoulder straps fit pretty good. I'm just trying to get it worth nice and tight on me. I can get the wand off the ground without getting crazy. You can just reach around and it's literally right near your butt. And then uh, there we go. Pump. Pump goes all the way, as you can see, not all the way down. All right there, it's right there. That's cool. I'm liking this so far. Let's just pump for a bit and see if I can build up pressure. Builds up pressure right away on an empty tank. Uh, the reason why that's significant is because there's more volume and it takes more pumps and more pressure and it still filled it up right away. So that's a good pump. 
uh, in my opinion. That piston pump or whatever is pretty good. Um, hose is pretty long. I can stretch my arm out all the way. I have full flexibility. So, um, and it's not dragging or anything on the ground. It comes down to my knees. So I'm really liking this design so far. Let's figure out um, what kind of sprayer I want. Because as you can see that, uh, yeah, that pile of dirt right there, whoop, whoop. That's a 20 by 24, 25 call it. And I'm spraying all that so no weeds, I like to use this as a pointer. So no weeds grow in there. So uh, let's get this job done. All right, the herbicide I'll be using is the, probably the best stuff on the market or one of the best. This is called RM43. With a name like that, you know that you're getting commercial grade stuff. So um, where can this be used? Do not use this near anything that you don't want to do to be dead. It will pretty much kill everything. Grass, weeds, uh, you name it. Um, it will kill trees if you plant it or if you use it near a tree canopy. So stay outside of tree canopies. And what is that? That's how far the branches go out. So um, that's, you know, the water drips down and it comes back to the, the tree roots is I guess the idea behind that. So don't put this under trees either. This for home use is basically for like driveways and sidewalks. Um, for like me, I'm putting down gravel, that's a driveway. So if you don't want it dead, don't use this stuff. Um, use something else, because this is very strong stuff. They're pretty nice too to, in the instructions on the back. It shows every, you can pause that if you want, but it shows every single grass, tree and brush weed it's known to kill. So make note of that if you're looking for something in particular to get rid of. So to mix this really well, um, what I did was I just got a little see-through cup, RM34, put the instructions, 7.4 ounce to one to 10 gallons of water. And then I marked the line, that's where eight ounces is, I'm just rounding it. And that treats up, uh, like I said, one to 10 gallons. So we're kind of mixing it just a little above uh, the middle. Um, since this is commercial grade stuff, I'm gonna try it right there. I don't think I need to go full power on this stuff considering it's nice and trimmed. Um, this treats uh, grass and brush up to, I think it said four inches. If it's any higher than four inches, you need to trim it down. Open up the hatch. It does have a filter screen in it. Pretty cool. Uh, let's talk about PPE or personal uh, protection equipment. You should be wearing goggles, um, maybe a respirator. If it's, you know, you're not supposed to put this in the wind. I think it's uh, up to 10 mile an hour wind. Um, probably gloves, all that. Uh, I'm just going to be really careful and I'm not doing this the best way, the OSHA way. You know, keep that in mind when you're pouring this stuff. This thing does have a measuring thing on the side, so I could have just subtracted, but I like these cups, so whatever. For stuff that I'm trying to be careful with, I like to cut a slit on the bottom to pour from, bigger one, and one on the top to let air run so it doesn't make a mess. This stuff has the consistency of antifreeze. So it's kind of nice, not too splashy. And is a dark red in color, indicating danger. Okay, since this is a concentrate, I'm going to rinse this out. The tank does have a mark right here um, with a line that says four gallons, right there at that mark. So we'll fill it up to that mark. I'm not gonna put the screen in there just so I don't have to clean it. I'm not sure what the screen is for. It might be for like stains and stuff that needs a little bit of mixing as it goes on. I don't see any point to it with poison. Make sure this is on nice and tight. I think I'm gonna use the fan nozzle so I can, cause I'm spraying a lot of ground. Swapping the nozzles as easy as one, two, three. Just unscrew this guy, looks like. This cone shaped guy. Pull that off, there's an O-ring, good. Slide that on. Try to get the nozzle pointing down in the same directions I'll be holding the wand. Uh, this is kind of a soft rubbery plastic. Not really too brittle. It looks like the uh, the head too, you can unscrew this and adjust the, the spray head. Is it easy to lift? Eh, it's a little heavy, but I mean, this is why you get things like this belt buckle or waistband, whatever you want to call it. And what you do, um, kind of lift it up like this and cinch it down and what you're doing is you're putting your weight on your stomach off your shoulders uh, reduces fatigue I only know this from backpacking 
All right, now if you are, if it is a little bit windy, uh, make sure to be spraying downwind. You don't want this stuff coming back up at you. But uh, let's give it a try. So let's see what one crank does. One up, one down. Got a little bit of air coming out and the liquids are already traveling up the wand. It's off at one pump. So let's try three. One, two, three. So it's barely coming out. Okay. One, two, three. We're starting to spray. So that's kind of weak. One, two, three. Coming down pretty good. I'm going to keep this as low to the ground as possible because this stuff is very poisonous. Okay, I'm at, I would consider this full pressure now. I'll put this down real heavy because I don't know how strong this stuff is. I'm going to work in lines, uh, vertical lines to the wind direction so I don't get any overspray on me. A little bit of wind I think is kind of nice when it's in one direction and you can predict it. But you're probably going to want to do this, especially to start down on a very calm day with no wind if you can, can get there. Every 10, 20 seconds, I think, I'm uh, pumping a couple more times, but I'm laying it down very, very thick, okay? All right, so that's this little area. I'm gonna continue doing all this dirt. I'm not gonna lay it down as thick near the dirt. I probably will spray around my, gr my shed here, maybe. I didn't trim it, maybe I'll trim it first. You can actually, if you pump too much, it'll actually start uh, stopping, so you know you're pumping at, at the maximum. All right, I got a 25-foot uh, line done working in about three foot, three to four foot wide strips. Uh, let's see. Well, this stuff goes pretty fast. I'm laying it down thick. Let's see if this canister will treat this area. I'm gonna lighten up a little bit. Um, because this is dirt, there's not much vegetation. I was laying it down real heavy because it's grass right there. I want it dead. So uh, yeah, let's uh, get crack lacking. Oh, that was the thing I was gonna mention. The lock thumb. Didn't even think about getting one of those. Awesome, okay? Because, uh, yeah, you can hold it down with your hand and you're, you're holding it down with the palm of your hand, it's nice. But yeah, I start getting a little bit of fatigue in my hand, you know, uh, especially if you have arthritis or anything or carpal tunnel. This lock, lifesaver. You can get a lot done. Uh, you know, no cramps, nothing. Backpack feels pretty good. It's not very uh, heavy. Um, weight's distributed nicely. With that lock too, you can kind of hold it by the hose and get it closer to the ground, which is nice more away from her body, so I kind of like that. All right, you can kind of figure out the time index there, but uh, I got my 20 by 25 spot, heavy coverage. Uh, let's see how much I got left in there. A little less than a half, like two, two gallons, a little more. I got a bunch of weeds around this area. I'm going to cut this with my weed whacker first and uh, spray around it. I'd like to see how it, uh, how it handles it.
got all that stuff cut and moved, let's start spraying. Well, that takes care of that. I still got a lot of juice in the tank. Um, I just did it real heavy, um, width of the spray, um, maybe a couple feet wide, all the way around, so that, uh, you know, I don't get all that growth again, hopefully. Let's try um, a different type of terrain. Um, this is gonna be some wood chipped areas, and uh, we'll see uh, the effects of just spraying, basically. All right, I got this little corner, it's got a lot of crap in there coming in, so I'm gonna lay it down thick to try to prevent it from ever growing again. Let's see if it works. All right, um, I'm gonna do my sidewalk because you can see got a lot of growth. So what I'm doing here is uh, spraying in between the wood and the brick because that's like spot that it always likes to grow. And then I'm spraying the weeds really hard and lightly spraying the brick and we'll see what kind of results we get. I'm kind of spot spraying these little guys. I'm just spraying where I think it's going to come up. Heavy on between the wood and the brick. The weeds like to grow there. I'm not going to spray on the inside because we got a couple plants there and I don't want to kill those. I'm not sure how strong it is. We usually just hand weed that. Weeding bricks is not the funnest thing to do, so I'm hoping this stuff's really good. And this, I mean, this is technically the canopy when this reaches out, but uh, I know the root system is really close to the plant, so I'm not too worried about it. sidewalk's done. I, uh, I actually got a weed problem, believe it or not, in my freshly redone as of this summer, like maybe a month or two ago, and I've weeded it already once or twice, and it's already filled back in with weeds. I mean, where we live, we got major growth problems. I mean, look at that. It's crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and spray away. I don't have much juice left. I've only got about a gallon, I think. So uh, I'm gonna spot spray these as best I can, and then we'll check on them and see how the results are. I can hear it in there, start to suck air a little bit when I pump. Good indicator that we are done. All used up. I'll spot spray a few things over here because I got some plants I don't want to kill. Let's see how that goes. Pretty happy with that result. This thing went a long way out of four gallons. Let's spray that little pile over there a little bit more with the remaining I got. Pretty amazing. This hose is mostly air and it's still spraying. I think we are 
bone dry. Come on. There's just residue in this thing. It's still trying. Okay, it finally died. Let's uh, let's run the uh, time calculator. See how much time this thing runs for. I'm gonna figure out the square footage and all that fun stuff. The stand to hold it up is great. Having the lever on either side to pump, great. You don't have to pump it a whole lot. The length of the hose is great. All the fittings are plastic, but they feel kind of rubbery, so it feels durable. The one thing that I do really like a lot is this lock, you know, and it's a palm grip. Uh, I like all the different heads. I do like that it has the, the waist strap to help carry the weight. But like I said, if you're over a size 36, maybe a 38 and then you're not wearing it on your belly, you can get away with it. It's padded on the back. The pads are good. The only problem I really had with the pads is they slide off my shoulders a little bit. So it'd be nice if it had like a, a chest uh, breast strap or whatever as well, just to keep it firm. Cause like sometimes I'm doing like one of these and bending over and the pack's kind of all over. Other than that, I love this thing. Easy to fill, it's pretty clean. I highly recommend this thing. Well, we got the RM34 down uh, five days ago. I put it down Saturday, today's Thursday. And this grass didn't really get killed too well. This stuff over here really got killed. A lot of these weeds are still kind of persistent, but they could be new. Around the shed, you know, it's yellowed. Pretty much, pretty much got the message, I think. And this little spot, eh, it killed some things, but there's still some things that are green. My sidewalk came out pretty good. Everything is pretty much yellowed and died. And I think that's a new one, which is weird. But I did spot spray this, and you can see the sides by the wood. It didn't kill the grass too bad outside of the of the spring, just on the inside where I intended. So that's good. These little spot sprays eh, killed the grass there a little bit, but here's where it's really shined. I laid it down real thick over here, emptying the bottle, and everything is yellow and dead. Everything over there is yellow and dead everything I sprayed so not bad so RM43 poison it's not bad but um if you're gonna use that uh, I highly recommend using a stronger dose I mixed around eight ounces to four gallons and you can mix almost eight ounces like whatever it was seven something ounces uh, one to ten gallons so you can mix it all the way down to super strong like eight ounce to, to one gallon strength. I would probably mix it a little bit stronger than I did. I'm thinking like eight ounces to like two gallons, something like that. Um, that'd be pretty good. Try it a little bit stronger. Let me know what you guys, you know, what kind of results you have. If you have experience with it, uh, let me know. But as far as the sprayer goes, I think it's awesome. I'm gonna do it again, love it. And there you go. The poison magically killed everything. Yeah, right, keep dreaming guys. Uh, I had to pull out the weeds. But when they're all yellowed um, and dying and crispy, they pull out really easy. And the poison's supposed to last four to six months, depending on um, how much rainfall you get. Until next time, Jeep Creepers. Don't forget to please subscribe, like the video. I'll have links in the description if I can get one of these similar on Amazon. But I'll link the poison for sure, the RM34. Yeah, I appreciate it if you purchase from me. Until next time.